Hi everyone, welcome back to Project Happy Home. For those of you who are new here, I'm Tanya, a doctor, lawyer, turned homeschool mom of three kids ages nine, six, and four. If you're interested in videos about secular homeschooling, raising a child with ADHD, and living a more essentialist lifestyle in general, you have come to the right place, so be sure to hit that subscribe button below the video. In today's video, I'll be showing you the Homeschool Science Bundle for Grade 5 from Evan Moore. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know that we've been using Evan Moore workbooks since the very beginning, and I have recently become an affiliate for them. What that means is that if you click on the affiliate link down below in the description box to check out this bundle and any other Evan Moore product and you purchase something, I do receive a small commission, which I would appreciate. That being said, I am not an employee of Evan Moore and all the opinions that I give you in this video or any of the Evan Moore review videos are entirely my own. When you order the science bundle, you get three different workbooks. You get the Skill Sharpener Science Book, the Daily Science Book, and a Daily Science Students Practice Book. Now these two books are actually very, very similar. Basically the Student Practice Book includes all of the practice pages in this book, but does not have the answer keys or the teacher guides. So Skill Sharpeners is available from grades pre-K through six, and it's suggested that you pace it by doing around one page a day or so. However, since it is organized as unit studies, my recommendation is that you use it however it works best for your family. Sometimes a book that's organized around units can be best utilized by focusing on one unit for a week, for example, or even over a few days. So here you go. You have Unit 1, Organisms and Ecosystems, Unit 2, Earth Systems, Unit 3, Space Systems, and Unit 4, Structure and Properties of Matter. If you break up these units, you can see that each of them has four different themes within them. So you have 16 themes altogether. If you look at the margin of the book, you can see how each of the different units are highlighted in the margins by different colors. So here you have Unit 4 is purple and all the different themes within them change as the title color changes in the margin. So you see here, here's the theme of gravity, Here's the theme of weathering and erosion, water and earth, the water cycle, and the atmosphere. And that is all within the second unit, which is Earth Systems. The very first unit is Organisms and Ecosystems, and the very first theme within that unit is How Planets Get Food, Different Concepts. So we'll go through that one just to give you an idea of how the book is structured. When you start the unit, you have a reading selection with some comprehension questions here. So you have a short reading section with color pictures, some vocab words that are defined up there in that box and then you have two sentences to complete. On the next page again you have a little reading section. You have a very clear diagram here, the definitions, and some questions to complete. On the next page you have a reading selection about photosynthesis, a diagram, definitions, and some true false. The next page has a visual literacy exercise so you have to label the diagram and also answer some questions. The next page has vocab practice so based on those definitions you saw earlier you fill in the blank with the appropriate vocab word. Finally you have some hands-on activities within that unit. You have take it or leaf it so you have these experiments where you record observations and you answer some questions. You also have another hands activity where you build a plant maze which I think is a really great activity. Here you have an essay to write or a short narrative basically about imagining that the sun, carbon dioxide, and water are having an argument about who is the most important in the process of photosynthesis. Pretend you are a plant listening to their argument. Write a story about the argument. If you have a child who loves to write, this is a great assignment. They can write a narrative, they can write a play, etc. If you have a child who doesn't, you might want to just ask them to put on a play and verbally tell you the same exact thing. That type of stuff in workbooks is up to you, but it is that tweaking that will make these workbooks valuable to you. Sometimes parents will tell me that I can't do workbooks with my kid because they just hate writing all of this stuff. There is no rule that says that your child has to write every single thing down in workbooks. How you use a workbook is really up to you. If you can use it in a way that makes your child learn the information, that's the end goal. And if your child can learn the information by listening and talking and narration, I think that is just as valuable as anything else and I think it makes the workbook really valuable in that way too because it presents the information in a way that they can then reflect their knowledge back to you. From this page to this page you'll notice that how plants get food and food webs are in two different colors in the margin there. So you know that you're switching to the next theme within the same green unit. 
of organisms and ecosystems. So one of the things I like best about these workbooks as I flip through is that the activities change. It includes both photographs as well as really good diagrams and drawings for the child to understand. I like how it has this unit study approach. I like that the hands-on activities are generally done with materials that you would easily find at home, like freezer bags, vegetable shortening, serving spoon, ice water, dry towel, and warm washcloth. The diagrams are really clear, you know, consumers, producers, decomposers, all of these things are easy to replicate. You can actually cut these diagrams out and put them in nature journals or ask the child to draw their own version. I'm a big fan of the Skill Sharpener Science Workbooks. We used second grade, I believe, a couple of years ago for my son and he loved it. There's a good mix of hands-on activities reading, crosswords, different types of language arts activities within the book. And then you have a full answer key. This form of answer key is my favorite type because it's really easy for an older student to use as they grade a younger student's work. It's really intuitive to find out where the answer is. Now the other two workbooks that you get are the Daily Science for grade five and the Daily Science Student Practice Book. As I mentioned before, the Daily Science Student Practice Book is basically all the worksheets that are included in this book, minus the answer key and the teacher guides. So I won't go into great detail about this book, but you should know that it is printed on a more newsprint type of paper. So the paper is a little less thick than the other one. And for reproduction value, this one will definitely be better because the pages are much more opaque and thick. This book includes the teacher guides and the answer key that the practice book lacks. It's also reproducible within a classroom. So if you have multiple students, you don't necessarily need to buy the student practice book. However, if you have two students, it makes it really easy because you're set to go. Now, Daily Science focuses on six big ideas throughout the year, and they relate key scientific concepts to real world applications, which is a really good way of teaching kids science at this age. If you're teaching theoretical science, especially, it's important to to show kids how the science applies in real life. And Evan Moore does a great job of that, both in this book and in Skill Sharpeners. Now the six big ideas are basically living cells and multicellular versus unicellular organisms, an ecosystem, water and the water cycle, gravity and planetary science, heat, conduction, convection, how um, states of matter work, and chemical reactions. And basically at the beginning of every single unit, you'll have two pages of a unit introduction. The unit introduction includes background material for the teacher, as well as an overview of the four weekly lessons and the week five's review material activities. The weekly lessons per unit are organized in five weeks. So you have four weeks of weekly lessons and then a final week of review. So each week, is organized as a five-day week. You have four lessons, and then you have one review lesson on a Friday or the last day of that week. So here for big idea number one, just to give you an idea, you have the key concept laid out, the standards, the teacher background, they overview the four weeks and the connection back to the big idea, and then they overview the different review pages for week five. So when you start off again, you have week one, why are bones hard and muscles soft? It goes through and tells you as the teacher what kinds of materials you'll need in the margin here, and it tells you what to introduce in terms of vocab and how to teach the lesson. Again, the, the student practice book lacks this page entirely and the unit introduction as well. It basically just has these pages that the student would be writing on. So here you have a weekly question, some reading, some labeling. I like how the vocabulary is isolated to the side and also how they have pronunciation guides included. So here you continue the concept and again the layout stays pretty much the same, though the amount of writing that the student has to do in the activity to demonstrate comprehension changes. Here you have day four and then day five. It's still the same question you'll notice every single day of that week. You have a little bit of a review activity where you're reviewing materials that you learned in days one through four. Week two, the question changes, but it still relates back to the big idea and you go on. And I'm just gonna flip through for you so you can see some of the different activities that are here. Now again, I got grade five 
because my son is a little bit advanced in science and I wanted to challenge him a little bit. So although he's technically going into grade four, he's one of these kids that reads a lot of science on his own. And I think he is ready for a little bit more challenge when it comes to science. I like the length of the reading selections as well. I don't think they're overwhelming. I like how they highlight the uh, vocab words so they can pick them out easily. And I also like how the activities change as we go through. Here you have discussion about a thermometer and thermal energy. What puts the fizz in soda? Why does metal rust towards the end? And then there is a complete answer key. And now this answer key is actually the old fashioned kind of answer key where you have it listed out by page. So you actually have to find out where you are, like what big idea, what week, what day. It's not my favorite type of answer key because it makes it harder for older siblings to use, but it will work. Another disadvantage of the answer key is that it's actually right on the back of the last unit review page, which I wish they hadn't done, but you can work around that. So. So this was the homeschool science bundle from Evan Moore for grade five. You can buy these books separately, but if you buy it as a bundle, you do receive a 25% discount. If you click on my affiliate link in the description box down below, you can get a closer look inside any of these books or any other Evan Moore book they have. That's one of my favorite things about their site. They give you a very clear impression of what's inside. They don't want to hide the ball. So you can really see several pages inside it before you decide if it's right for your family. As always, you guys, I really do appreciate your time. Thank you for spending some of it with me and I wish you the very best day.